Hey, what's up everybody? It's Unpunk coming back with another Three Houses video. Today we'll be going over all things gardening as the developers of Three Houses decide to make this simple task into one of the most in-depth features in this entire game. So bear with me. While we go through this video, it's going to be a little bit longer, but it's going to explain every aspect of gardening, how they work, and obviously going to go over some of the basics that you'll probably already know. I want to give a shout out to the two users on screen now for suggesting a few different parts of gardening they would like better explanations of. It got me on the path to starting this video, so big shout out to you guys. Thanks so much for the suggestions. I really appreciate it. Additionally, I'd like to thank Serene's Forest for making a wonderfully in-depth guide on how gardening works and for all the tables you'll see throughout this video used. They're all from Serene's Forest. If you still don't quite understand a little bit of something or need some references, make sure to check the link in the description on the top. It will take you over to Serene's Forest where they got all the text guides written out for everything regarding gardening. First, let's go over the basics, which I'm sure most of you already know, but hang tight for just a minute while I refresh your memory. There are three parts to gardening in three houses, planting, cultivating, and then finally harvesting. For planting seeds, you can plant up to five of any seed combination you want, and they will vary vastly in the items you obtain. Cultivating allows you to add a cultivation method to enhance seed growths and gain more items. And harvesting obviously collects all of the items you just grew. You can only plant once per free day and cannot harvest said items until a week has gone by or your next free day, which should be the same thing either way. When you harvest, you can get a wide variety of different items, seeds, and stat boosters, which we'll dive into throughout this video. Next, let's talk about how your professor level affects gardening. Depending on which professor level you are at, anywhere between E through A, it determines how many seeds you can plant per week, as well as which cultivation methods you have available. On screen, you will see a chart that shows all of the professor levels and which rewards they give you. For example, if you are a D ranking professor, you get two seeds you can plant, or up to two seeds, and you have the thir first three different cultivations, which will be Infuse with Magic, which is free. Pour Aramid Water, which is 300 gold. Or Prune, which costs 500 gold. Now that you understand the bas basics of how gardening works, let's move into the number of items you can get from each seed you plant and how they interact with the cultivation method chosen. On screen, you'll see a list of how many items you obtain when harvesting. Let me explain how this works. Cultivation methods, depending on which of the ones you use, will allow you to basically have more rewards from each seed. So the more expensive the cultivation method is, the more items you're going to get per seed. So as you can see, if you're not using any, you have a little bit of a variation between what kind of, or how many items rather, you can obtain. Whereas if you use any of the cultivation methods, you have a guaranteed number depending on how many seeds you're planting. Obviously, the more seeds you can plant, the better but it is also good to make sure you're staying with the same seed type that's going to make the rest of this video a little easier to understand. Now to make the next section easier specifically we've labeled each of the cultivation methods with a number of C1 through C6 with the exclusion of the none because that's not a method at all and basically we're going to get into that in just a minute but I also want to note that, again, when you're using multiple seeds of different types, it will make the yield results heavily unpredictable based on everything I'll be explaining in the rest of this video. So I highly recommend you stick to planting as many of the same type of seeds as possible and not mixing any seeds. Now let's move on to the yield relationship, which is much more complex than anything we've talked about yet. Each seed has a potential or possibility of yielding different tiers of items. What I mean by that is each seed planted will be able to yield three different tiers of items, which vary depending on which seed used and if they are all of the same seed type. Obviously, tier 1 has the overall lowest quality items obtained from it, while tier 3 will have the possibility for the highest quality items. On screen, you will see a table of the yield results for each of the seed types in the game. 
Now, I'm not going to go through and read all these, but feel free to pause the video if you guys have any questions or want to be able to check out the yield results specifically for whatever seed you're looking at. As you probably noticed, this table won't tell you specifically which items are from which seed, but rather it shows which tier of items are possible. A little later in the video, I will show you how to figure out which items you can get from each tier, but first let's explain this table a little more. Obviously you'll notice that each seed you plant of the same type will increase or decrease the tier of items you can expect to obtain from your harvest. You'll also probably notice that there is a superscript as noted in the previous table, C1 through C6, above some seeds that requires a certain cultivation method to achieve said tier level. For example, C4 requires you to cultivate the seeds by scattering bone meal in order to yield that higher tier, which also to note is not guaranteed, but is possible if you're using the correct cultivation method. Once you understand how to figure out which tier of items you will gain from your harvest, we can move on to how to figure out specifically which items you get from each tier, which is a little bit more of a complex subject. I'm not going to have all three yield tiers on screen here, but I'm just going to have part of one of them for example purposes. If you'd like to see all the rewards from all three tiers, check the link in the description and click on the items by yield tab. Each yield, level 1, 2, or 3, is secretly divided into two halves. In the lower half, the chance of obtaining lower quality items, items that are on the left side of either row, is more likely. In the upper half, the chance of higher quality items, items that are on the right side of either row, is more likely. Regardless of which half you're in, it's possible to obtain items from both rows. If an item appears multiple times, it means that you could get multiple of the same items from that tier of rewards. For example, if you had a tier 1 yield of mixed herb seeds, and you had three seeds planted with no cultivation method used, you can expect to get seven to eight items from the top two rows of items possible as per the table on screen now. More specifically, that means you would obtain seven or eight of the following items, weeds, onions, mixed herb seeds, turnips, cabbage, and peach currant. Obviously, weeds are the lowest quality item possible, while peach currant is the highest qual po quality item possible from said yield. It is possible for you to calculate the exact items you will get from each yield if you want to, but it is pretty complex. I doubt most people would really benefit from learning as it's very time consuming for the average person and probably just isn't overall worth it. If you'd like to learn more though, feel free to click the link in the description and the tab titled calculations for a more in-depth explanation on how those work. Next up, we're going to talk about how to obtain specific seeds by planting and harvesting other seeds. Each seed type has a possibility to yield specific seeds as a result, and that depends on which yield tier you achieve when planting and cultivating. As you see on screen, there are a few examples of which seed types you will receive upon harvesting depending on which yield tier is achieved. For example, if you wanted red flower seeds, but you only have blue flower seeds available, you would need to get a yield tier of two to three from planting and cultivating the blue flowers for a chance to be able to get the red flower seeds. But you might also get pale blue flower seeds or Western Fodland seeds, green flower seeds, root vegetable seeds, or even Eastern Fodland seeds. Thusly, the ability to calculate what you will receive specifically can come in very handy, but again, it's so complex to grasp and kind of just understand, it's not really versatile for most of the players or users to really spend their time learning. Last but not least, we are going to talk about how you obtain stat boost items and from which seed you can get each type. You can obtain stat boost items from any of the three yield levels, but Obviously, it's more likely to obtain from a higher tier. As seen on screen now, the stat boosting items you can receive all have at least two different seeds that you can obtain them from, while some have three. For example, 
if you want a strength stat boost, you can plant mixed herb seeds, angelica seeds, or purple flower seeds. The chances of getting that strength boost will also depend on the tier of the yield and if all seeds are of the same type. Thanks for checking out the video. I hope this helped you guys learn some more about gardening in three houses. Not really sure why the developers decided to make such a simple process into something so complex and have so many different variables in it, but I hope this video kind of helped you get a little bit of a grasp on whatever you were looking for in gardening, whether it was trying to get a specific boost, trying to figure out what kind of items you're gonna get, or even if it's just to check out and learn the basics. If you guys did enjoy this video, it'd be super, super cool if you could drop a like. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment and I'll do my best to get back to each one. I also wanted to note that no copyright was intended from any of the information gathered from Serene's Forest and that all tables are from the link in the description. So make sure to go show them some love if you haven't already for the phenomenal guide they put out. If this video has helped you out in any way, Make sure to drop that like and subscribe if you guys are new so that way you guys don't miss a single upload here on the channel. If you have any questions, again, just let me know and we'll see you guys real soon. Peace.